Well, good morning. Well, Jamie's on this Monday, January 22nd. Um, the, one of the scripture readings yesterday in uh, worship was from 1 Corinthians, um, the seventh chapter. And like Pastor Josh referred to maybe a week or so ago, sometimes the scripture allows you to weave them together on a Sunday morning and other times they're better just to stand alone and you ignore uh, some of the other texts that, that leave people scratching their heads. So this was um, one of the readings from yesterday. Paul writes, I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. And then a side note in this Lutheran study Bible, uh, it talks about these verses 29 and 31. Paul apparently believed the time he was living in would soon pass away. This seemed to color his views of whether or not to marry. So that whole little section in there on marriage um, is interesting. And I sometimes <clears throat> scratch my head a little bit that um, when people will refer to scripture and talk about just how core marriage is, they've, they've not, not read Paul uh, because he himself was not married and he, in Corinthians, was advising people, if you're not married, don't get married. Um, if you are married, stick with it. And um, But he does say here, um, just talking about the, and I think that this might have to do with Roman Catholic Church, maybe where they get celibacy for priests, Paul writes later, I want you to be free from anxieties. The unmarried man is anxious about the affairs of the Lord, how to please the Lord. But the married man is anxious about the affairs of the world, how to please his wife, and his interests are divided. So, um, again, just a, a, a little interesting section there. But Rene had a question on it, just when Paul's view of um, the end times or messianic age, that this, you know, that's what Paul was thinking, that Jesus would soon return. And that did not happen. And so there's an urgency and a fervency about um, basically stopping everything you're doing and get, get right with God because God's coming right back. Um, that's a bad paraphrase, but essentially the, the things of this world are, are significantly less important. Well, by the time Luke wrote the, his gospel, and um, he, he basically, what I was taught, somewhat introduced the concept of the, the time of the church. We had the Jesus' death and resurrection, and now we're living in this between times with the time of the church being the body of Christ, and then looking for Christ's uh, return. So this also got me thinking about cults and how I've... I've um, Kind of been on the periphery of a couple that have never come close but when i was in oregon interestingly enough uh, there's the bhagwan sri rashnish movement that came out of india and they were looking to establish a town in oregon and uh, you know the even though capitalism was highly highly incentivized in their community um, the bhagwan had like 13 different rolls royces and the other people didn't seem to be living on near that amount of capital. And so this, this cult of personality that has surrounded him where you get a messiah-like figure and how horribly that's gone astray. You can think of David Koresh in Waco. You can think of Bhagwan Sri Rashnish in Oregon, um, Jim Jones, and it, it just goes on. And so how I bring this around for our confirmants in today's world is that uh, there's always going to be some folks out there proclaiming certain things and, and you can be on your lookout um, for one is, are you, uh, are you able to question authority? And so as a, as a good instance, the kids are free to ask any questions they want of me in confirmation. I may not have the answers. Um, I might just be able to point them in the right direction. I may refer them right back to their parents, depending on, <laughs> on the questions being asked. But the point is you are permitted and even encouraged to ask questions, seeing as a sign of faithfulness, not as a sign of faithlessness or mistrust. But you get into cultic type dynamics and you have to swear absolute allegiance to the leader and you have to not question things. 
up is down, down is up. And uh, so that's not how we teach confirmation. I, I shared, um, you know, that's one of the things I love about Lutheran theology is that we're not discouraged from asking questions. You are not discouraged from trying to uh, see where, say, where faith intersects with science. We're, you know, so these are all good things. But that's a rambling Monday. Paul, again, if you're interested in Paul's view on marriage, uh, seventh chapter of 1 Corinthians, we'll give you some, some things to chew on. And then um, for those two verses that we read yesterday, again, Paul, Paul was writing from the context of thinking that Jesus would return quickly and he had bigger fish to fry than worrying about things like getting married or not getting married. So, well, let's pray. Lord, thanks for this day. Uh, thank you for the people you bring into our lives, the joy that that brings. Um, give you thanks for the community of faith that you have gathered and continue to gather to follow Jesus and to do your will in the world. Help us in our um, small patches of this garden to, to tend to it as we are bet best able to do and to go about um, sharing your love with the world. And this we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, hope you have a blessed day today and uh, God's peace be with you. Bye-bye.